With Cisco routers, we can restrict access to parts of our network a number of different ways. And one way to control access to parts of our network is to use the Null Zero Interface. The Null Zero Interface is a logical interface, and when traffic is sent to it, the traffic is discarded. Logical meaning that you can't touch it since it only exists in the software of the router. You may also see this type of interface referred to as a black hole or bit bucket because what goes into it does not come out. If you don't want traffic to move through a particular router but through the inner network by more preferred paths, you could configure the null zero interface to discard any packet that the network sends to that particular router. In our example here, we see the network is configured using a class B IP scheme in the range of 172.0.0.0 with a 16-bit subnet mask. To stop the advertising of our private address scheme to the outside world, we just create a static route that directs all traffic for the 172 network to a null zero interface on the local router. So now if someone tries to access our private network from the internet through that router that has the null zero interface configured to stop that from happening, the packets will be discarded. If a packet is sent from one segment to another on the internal network, it won't be routed through router B that has the null zero interface. It will only be routed through router A. If someone wants to try to ping our private network from the internet, there will be no echo response because the ICMP traffic has been discarded through the null zero interface thrown into the bit bucket. Same thing if someone tries to scan our private network from the outside. Now to configure a null zero interface on a 2500 series router, just configure a static route using the IP route command and add the null zero to the end of it instead of the address of the next hop router. Let's see how we do that. So currently I have focus on my Tampa router and I've done a show IP route and we're looking at my routing table that I currently have on here and, on, and at this time I have a default route configured pointing to my serial zero interface going out over to the next hop which would probably be my ISP at this time. Now let's get up inside the global configuration mode and we're going to configure a static route that points to a null zero interface. So I don't want any traffic from my 172 network sent to this router, either from the internet or from the internal network. So I'm going to type in IP route 172.0.0.0 with a subnet mask of 255. Dot zero dot zero. And now I'm going to end this in with instead of the interface of my next hop router with a null zero. That tells it to create a logical interface and send all traffic from the 172 network to this logical interface. So I'm just going to type in null zero. And there you go. Now when I hit enter, it's just going to put an entry into my routing table that says, hey, any traffic that is bound for the 172 network and goes to this logical interface, and the logical interface doesn't go anywhere, it's just an abyss or a black hole or a bit bucket, and therefore the traffic will be discarded. Now in this series on routing, we've been talking about static routes, and a null zero interface is just that, but instead of the next hop address for the interface of the next router, we direct traffic to a logical interface that is local to the router. The interface parameter is just another tag that can be added to a static route in lieu of the next hop address. Previously when we looked at configuring static routes we used just the syntax we needed to get the entry into the routing table. But not only can you tell a static route where to find the next router, we can tell it what logical or local interface to go out of to find the next router. In our next video on floating static routes we'll take a look at some more syntax for configuring the administrative distance for static routes.